Hello, people of Earth. It's been a year since I purchased this jar of Grey Poupon, and it's since expired. It expired in February. And a year since I purchased this 2005 Rolls-Royce Phantom. I bought it in Chicago at one of the fanciest dealerships that I've ever been to, and it actually made the trip home despite being the cheapest Phantom in the USA and having numerous mechanical issues. Since getting it home and sorting it out, it's been relatively trouble-free, with one exception, and I do love this car, but I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it much past the one-year mark, so I took it to my old friends at CarMax to see what they would give for it. Actually, CarMax wasn't the first place that I took it to get a trade-in offer. The local Porsche dealer here in town had a Turbo S traded in that I was kind of interested in, and I took this car in for their trade evaluation, and they refused to even give me a number at all. They took it to their wholesale manager to give it a bid, and I guess that was way too low, so then he called around his wholesale sources that he knew from being in the car business forever, and those offers were even lower, so he didn't even present me with an offer. He didn't want to insult me and make me mad, which is a first. Usually a car dealer was going to do anything they can to make a deal. They don't care if they make you mad. They're going to try and sell you a car. But in this case, they were like, there's no chance. He's, he's not going to take this. So it was a little strange and a little discouraging, especially when you consider how much I've spent on this thing over the past year. When I arrived in Chicago and saw my Phantom for the first time, this purple blue paint gleaming in the Chicago sunlight on their magnificent mile, I, I was wowed, especially considering it was the cheapest Rolls Royce Phantom in the USA. It was only $80,000, which was cheap at the time for a Rolls Royce Phantom. So when I sat in it and started driving it, uh, that's when I realized why it was the cheapest Rolls-Royce Phantom in the USA, because it had numerous undisclosed issues, things they didn't tell me about before I flew out, of course, things like a warning light for the suspension. This car has air ride suspension, and it didn't like something. Also, both of the front windows, the regulators, they either weren't working or one, the driver's side, was on its way out, and there was numerous trim pieces that were loose and peeling. Also, once you got up close and personal with the wrap that was originally on this hood, someone had put a metallic wrap on it to make it look more modern, uh, but when you got close to it, it looked really cheap. And these trim pieces, they were glued back on with what looked like crazy glue or a hot glue gun. It looked awful. Had to peel that off right away when I got home. But it didn't make that 700 mile trip home without any issues. Shortly after I got home though, I did have a misfire from this BMW V12, which was very worrisome. But thankfully it was only a $25 coil that fixed the misfire. For once I was really happy that I had a BMW product under the hood, but there was still lots of sorting to do. The air suspension error was actually due to a weak pump, and that was also a BMW derived part, so it wasn't too bad. But the window regulators, that was Rolls Royce specific. I would have spent thousands and thousands of dollars replacing those, but I sent them off to be rebuilt for about $1,500. And with a little bit of glue and ingenuity, my mechanic, the car wizard, was able to get the interior trim pieces back together. But the big expensive item were these wheels. Originally, my Phantom came with a really good looking set of wheels, but they were made to mount Michelin Pax tires. And these tires I couldn't find. It's an experimental run flat system that had a double lip on the tire to keep it from falling off. And, and it wasn't too well received by tire shops in the public. So they did away with them after a few years and I couldn't find replacement tires. I didn't want to go all gangster and put 22s with spinners or that kind of stuff that would fit this thing. So I sourced actual Rolls Royce wheels from a 2018. These were actually the cheapest I could find, and they were $4,000, $4,000. So that was the bulk of my repairs there. But with everything else, I spent about $8,000 sorting out this Rolls-Royce Phantom and another $7,000 in taxes and tags to get this thing on the road. So I was, I'm very deep into this car. Thankfully though, after I got this thing fixed, this Rolls-Royce did give me a rather long honeymoon, which was not Forgot about that. Oh dear. A moment of silence for the great Poupon. Anyway, as I was saying, I 
was rewarded all those repairs with a nice long honeymoon. Six months and 6,000 miles without really any issues. Took it on several road trips and really enjoyed the car. Obviously these cars are put together really well, so I was super happy that the deferred maintenance was, was all that I needed to do to have six months of enjoyable ownership. But it is, after all, a BMW there underneath the hood, and it had a very stereotypical BMW coolant leak, which quickly got worse. So I got this thing up to my mechanic, the car wizard, and he initially thought it was the water pump pulled off the water pump and that actually gave him insight into finding the source of this river Nile of coolant coming out of this engine and it was unfortunately the coolant crossover pipe which if you're familiar with BMWs you know that requires removing the intake the injectors basically everything off the top of the engine to access this crossover pipe that leaks. It's a big job and while he was there I had him complete the tune-up because I did have that one coil that went out and, and it was much easier to do the rest of them while all this stuff was out of the way. You could reach all the coils and spark plugs and the water pump even though it wasn't the source of the leak the bearing was getting a little scratchy so it made sense to replace that anyway. Initially I thought I was getting away with just a water pump and that would have been less than $500 but unfortunately it was all that and I decided to do more. So I spent $2,600 for my six month anniversary with this Phantom. Could be worse, but obviously still a big repair. But the good news is up until now, another six months, I, I really haven't had any issues to speak of. This thing has been totally rock solid and reliable. I'm gonna knock on all the wood I have in here right now. But, but still, after a year, I'm, I'm just not sure if I'm going to keep it. I love the fact that this is the last great land yacht, the last of the dinosaurs still in existence, and it's built in the old-fashioned way, that hand-built, custom coachwork kind of approach to car assembly that was commonplace 100 years ago, but is pretty much dead now. This is the last of the dinosaurs, but still, it is a little ostentatious. It gets way more attention than I want, or say compared to a Mercedes S-Class or a BMW 7 Series. And while I do love that they focused mostly on comfort and quality, this thing rides so nice, the seats are so cushy and comfortable, and the quality of materials in here are incredible. And I love that they focus on that more than they did glitzy technology or trying to make this thing a good performer like so many luxury sedans now. But I do wish it had a little bit more technology in this thing. I don't even have a backup camera and this thing's massive and that little window back there is so small. I, I can't see what I'm backing into. And it would be nice if I could sync my phone to this stereo somehow and the shape of the stereo with the wood and everything else. There, there's no replacing it for a normal stereo. That I'm stuck with this forever. My 1966 Imperial, which is another hand-built land yacht, which in its day was very expensive, but I got it super cheap. It, it rides a lot like this. It feels a lot like this. Despite being generations older, it still kind of rides and feels the same. So I can achieve this giant luxury land yacht status in a much cheaper vehicle, even cheaper than my Imperial. There's plenty of 70s boats that you can buy for five or ten grand and have a really similar experience to this Phantom. I mean, not quite. This thing is really, really nice and beautiful, but it's not that far off. So I'm kind of waffling on whether I should keep it, but so far I haven't had anybody give me an offer. Like I said earlier, the dealer didn't even want to give me a number, but I do know one place that will always give you an offer on their car no matter what, and that's CarMax. So we're on our way to CarMax right now to see what they'll give me for my Rolls-Royce Phantom. Clearly this isn't something they're going to want in their inventory, so it's going to be a straight wholesale bid. And since this thing has an accident on the history report from the original old man owner that had this thing backing into it and bumping something, not really damaging the car, I'm guessing it's going to be low. <laughs> I'm over $100,000 into this thing at this point, and I think I owe... Uh, like fifty-eight or nine thousand at my credit union still, uh, so so we'll see. I bet their offer isn't going to even pay off my loan. I'm gonna guess around forty.
All right, I'm back with a number. Normally I milk this for all that I can to get you to subscribe and really make you angry because you want to see this number, but I'm not telling you. And I'm going to do that again this time. So please subscribe to Hoovy's Garage if you haven't already. It really helps me uh, afford all of these hoopties, especially with the loss I'm going to take here if I sold it to CarMax because they offered $53,000, $53,000, which is way better than I thought. I was actually pretty impressed. Now, in the year that I've owned this car, it has depreciated some. $80,000 was the cheapest Rolls-Royce Phantom in the country, but I suspect you could find a pretty nice Rolls-Royce Phantom, one that's sorted like this for around $80,000 pretty easily nowadays. Trade-in would probably be somewhere in the low 60s. That's why CarMax probably put in this offer for 53 because they could take it to auction and sell it and make five or 10 grand or, or at least for sure not lose money because they're seeing all the wholesale comps selling in the low 60s. So they're giving themselves a pretty wide margin here just in case this thing blows up or whatever. So, you know, around 60 for trade-in. So the private party would probably be around $70,000. And as you all know, I have over $100,000 invested into this car at this point, which is unbelievable. Uh, so I'm not sure if I could stomach that. I mean, if somebody came with a $70,000 offer or something close to it and, and wanted to buy this car, would I take it? And the answer is, I don't know. I, I really like this thing. I do drive it a lot. And despite my short attention span, I'm not bored driving this car yet. But I feel like if I did sell it, I could replace it with something just as cool, if not cooler. So I really don't know. I guess we'll see. And thank you for watching and following this Rolls-Royce saga over the past year. And maybe the journey will continue.